not much in the way of slides really, but you know, you gotta have the company logo up there, so we had to have at least a couple. So the discussion on ORM pros and cons, I wanna make sure they understand this is not a religious discussion. Um, like any tool, people tend to fall in love with it, and once you have a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. And ORM is a tool. It's the right fit in certain situations, in other situations, it's probably not. And so I'm just gonna talk, obviously we don't have a lot of time, so just pretty briefly, about some of the pros and cons, both ways, to consider if you're gonna think about using an ORM as a tool. Uh, you can go to Wikipedia if you'd like to get kind of the definition, the technical, more technical definition of an ORM, but really all it is, you know, your database typically is more structured data, table, table formatted. Typically you're working in an object-oriented language, and they're similar, but they're not an exact match. And so the ORM attempts to make that match for you. And so doing, hopefully, makes some things easier to work with. There's a lot of ORMs out there. I work in the .NET world, so Entity Framework is the one that I use the most. Uh, but there's others. There's others for .NET, and of course in the Java world or open source, there's, there's all kinds of other options, such as in Hibernate or Dapper for, for .NET different strengths and weaknesses like anything else for, for those different tools as well. So just take a few minutes, gonna talk about kind of the pros of using an ORM. Probably the main benefit of, uh, of using an ORM is that it helps to reduce the amount of code you have to write. Typically in the more probably classic approach of writing stored procedures and then you call that, in many ways, you have to duplicate not only your class structure that matches your table structure, and then you have to write all the store procedures for all your CRUD. And so there's a, a decent amount of duplication to get your SQL statements to match up to your objects. And so that's the, really the point of an ORM, is to help to reduce uh, that amount of work and that duplication. It also helps you to keep that separation of concerns. So your data access is your data access, and it helps to keep you from doing what most of us end up doing with stored procedures is we shove an awful lot of our business logic down into our stored procedure, and now we really have broken that separation of concerns of our data access from our business logic. So another value that it can provide for us. Uh, another thing that it can help us with is caching. Most ORMs have a caching feature, and so that's typically just kind of free as you use an RM, and most of them also have ways that you can easily extend that caching for whatever environment that you're working in much more easily than if you have to write all of that yourself. And then one of the features that I like, and I've gotten really a big believer in writing unit tests, and particularly if you have complicated business logic that you have in your store procedures, it's all but impossible to really unit test that when you have your logic mi mixed in with your data access. So just an example I found, I think this was off of Microsoft's website, of how you can use Entity Framework and actually just do it all up in memory and write some very simple unit tests. So this is just an example of how you can, you can set that up and then it uses your data model and then you can write all your unit tests right against your data model. So it, it does make writing unit tests much, much simpler than the more traditional store procedure route that most of us either have done or are doing. Again, it's not a perfect tool like any other tool. It's got its drawbacks. And so we'll talk a little bit just about some of those drawbacks. And I'm gonna start with what I consider to be the biggest drawback, and that is the query structure sometimes is just nasty. And particularly if you need to write some pretty complicated queries with left joins and, and group joins and all that, the link syntax is just, for most of us that grew up in the SQL world, it's backwards. And it's just a little hard to wrap your head around how to do it. You can do, if you can do it in SQL, you can do it in link. It's just not always clear. Now there's ways to mitigate that with a proper data model so that you have to do as little of this as possible. But it is an issue, and particularly depending on your development staff that's working with it, what's their maturity level, how comfortable are they with some of the, the concepts that go with uh, uh, having to use link, and if they can 
keep up with that or not. So it's something to consider because it definitely is a, a complexity that it adds. Another con is just speed. Obviously, the ORMs, as time is going on, they get better. And current version of EF, especially EF core, is really pretty fast. But it's never going to be as fast as writing your own SQL. You can always tweak things in a way more easily if you're writing direct SQL yourself or in a stored procedure. So there is a performance hit that you're always going to get when you use an ORM. Again, that's been mitigated and is re reduced, but it's still there. The final thing, I'll, or not the final, but another issue is performance tuning. Um, it's really easy to write really bad queries with an ORM. Um, there's ways that you can create what you think is a single query that ends up being run in a loop thousands of times and you just kill your performance. Um, it can be difficult when you've got a query issue You've got to log that to try to get what SQL is being generated and then fiddle with the link query so that it kind of comes out hopefully in a much more efficient fashion. It can be complicated and it can be hard to track down depending on how your application is instrumented and what kind of information you're recording in your logs. And then finally, uh, if you have complex relationships, um, for most of what I do, many to many is probably as complex as we really get. And the syntax for defining that relationship is a little weird. And it's a little, especially in EF core, it, once you know it, it's not too bad, but it is, it, it's a complexity that you now have to deal with and you have to maintain. So those are just four or five pros and four or five cons. The main point I want to get across is, is that it, it is a tool and it does solve certain problems or at least reduces those problems. It doesn't solve every problem and so if you're starting on a new project, it's worth taking a look at and to see whether its pros outweigh the cons in your particular project and your particular need. Every project's a little bit different and the, and the needs that match either a pro or a con are gonna be different. So not everything's a nail, so not everything needs a hammer. So sometimes you need straight SQL for the performance or for other reasons on your team, but sometimes an ORM is, is a good tool. So if you haven't already, take the time to, to investigate, to look at it, and, and to see what your options are. Just thought a few bits and pieces. I just did a quick Google search and found a couple of references I included here, uh, one off of medium.com and one off of Wikipedia, just to kind of define. This article from this gentleman I thought was a, uh, most articles you find are religious in nature. Their ORM is the greatest thing in the world or ORM from the devil. They're neither, and so you want to find a balanced approach, and I thought that particular article, the gentleman had a really balanced approach. I got just probably about two minutes left. I don't know if there's, if we do question and answer, but if we do, and there are any questions, I'll either answer that or tell you I don't know. So, no questions, it doesn't look like. I don't know, does somebody have online questions or anything? So I explained everything perfectly, so that is great. So we'll just pass on to the next uh, presenter then.